Good afternoon. Afternoon. I just coming out of a meeting. So I gotta get my, my head on straight. Hello, hello, hello. Turn your videos on if you can. Thank you. Couple more minutes. How's everybody doing? Good. 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 No <clears throat> Raise your hand yeah. if you know if you know Selma County. Does anybody know any accounting? Um, debits and credits, that kind of thing? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. A little Zook, bit. A little bit. Anthony? I have a BS in the county. <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, I so, so, so do you? <laughs> Answer the question, Anthony. <laughs> what, was the, what was the question again? Would you <laughs> exactly. I've been doing them for 30 years. <laughs> All right, well, you should teach this class. No, no. <laughs> Hi, Faye. I'm going to go get some more water. I will be right back. Okie dokie. Where are you located, Anthony? I'm in Delaware. Okay. How about yourself? <clears throat> I'm in South Florida. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Originally from Philadelphia. Had... Pardon me? Originally from Philadelphia. Okay. I'm originally from Pennsylvania myself. Okay. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Pottsville? Yes. Okay, I know Pottsville, I know Pottstown, I know them both. You know them both? You know Pottsville? Uh, wow. Yeah, I know them, yeah. Wow. I lived out in Montgomery County. Oh, yeah, okay. So I wasn't too far from, yeah. 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 Is what Pottstown? county is that? Sorry, I interrupted. No problem. Is, is Pottstown where uh, Groundhog Day, Day was? Groundhog Day? Oh, where was it's that? Potsdatani is the name of the place. Yeah. Potsdatani, yeah. Potsdatani, Phil. That's right. <laughs> 20, I'm 20 minutes away from Wyatt and Willie. You know uh, Alan? He's another groundhog. No, oh. I never heard of that one. I mean, I'm in Ontario, Canada. Oh, okay. Ontario. There's more than one groundhog? Oh, there's like four of them. <laughs> Jeez, they a lot of famous groundhogs. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys ready to get started yeah ready okay Go. so let's mute your device please but if you do have any questions just unmute 
and shout them out as we go. We don't have to wait to the end, okay? Um, just feel free to jump in. Be, think of it like a just an open discussion, but, um, but when you're not uh, chiming in, mute it just so that we don't have background noise. Okay, so first thing I wanna do for Accounting 101, um, a lot of people got a lot of requests for this. Um, kind of just to gain a general understanding of what accounting is, because we get into uh, bookkeeping and we learn bookkeeping through QuickBooks. And a lot of people don't know what's going on behind the scenes, don't know uh, a lot of the terminology that's in the industry. So, uh, Let's get into, first thing I wanna get into is termin the terminology. So we can cover like a lot of, like all the terminology as I see it. I'm not gonna read from definitions that you can find on Google. Um, if you want any additional information on any of these terms, um, you can just Google them. But this is, I'm just gonna answer them um, kind of how I wanna answer them or define them and then, um, and how they've, you know, because a lot of times things are written a certain way for for book knowledge and then kind of real life knowledge. So we'll see how how that plays out. All right, so let's just go through uh, some terminology, and then I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all of this in one sitting. We'll see how long it takes. Um, I have plenty of time today, but um, it may be a two hour thing, so we can split it up into two, but we'll just see how it goes um, as we get into it. So first let's do terminology. And I have a whole list. This isn't every term, um, but these, cause I don't wanna give you too much information, but um, this is kind of all the 101 fun, uh, fundamentals that I think you should have. All right, so we're gonna do terminology. We're going to go over financial statements, um, and I'm going to provide a bunch of examples and how they are how they affect the financial statements. All right, so I think I'll write each one individually up here, so you know what word we're on. So you're not thinking, what's he talking about? All right, so financial statements. I think we should start here. So financial statements are the uh, the two big ones are balance sheet and PL. Um, PL is also called income statement. I'll, I'll define each of those in a minute. But the financial statements, just in general, are the reports that uh, management should be looking at on a regular basis to determine how the health of their business. And it's also what uh, businesses need to turn over to uh, tax preparers in order to get their taxes prepared. So these are the backbone of books, is, are the financial statements. Every transaction that is made either hits a balance sheet and or a p and I'm gonna say p and but p and profit and loss, is what PL stands for. I'm gonna say, say PL, but it, it stands for profit and loss, and it can also be called income statement. Those are interchangeable terms. So there's two things. There's two different reports. There's, there's more reports, but the two we're gonna talk about are the are the balance sheet and the PL. Um, and then when we get into examples, you're gonna see how the different transactions hit those statements. Um, and hopefully by the end of this accounting one-on-one thing you'll have a really good understanding of, oh, when I make this, when I make this entry or put this into QuickBooks, I know already how it's reflected on the financial statements. All right. So that's what the financial statements are, is it's a, it's an ongoing collection of every transaction you make in the books. And again, it can either hit uh, the p &L, it can hit the balance sheet, it can hit both at the same time. All right, so let's talk about 
the PL slash income statement. PL profit loss. So in short, <laughs> I'll show you examples of these two. Um, and I, I'll share the screen here in a second. Uh, the the, the PL, it's basically uh, it it's captures all the income coming into the company and all the expenses. So let's let me share a screen. This is a sample company that's in our QuickBooks. Can you guys see that? Thumbs up, anybody? Can you see it? Yes. Okay, cool. So that's the uh, that's the balance sheet. We'll pull up the PL. Okay, so top to bottom, it's income or revenue minus expenses equals net. Let me clap some of these so you don't have to see all the detail. So it's a shorter, cleaner list. Let me see what's in there. Okay, see how nice and short and clean this is? Uh, a lot of times, your clients you'll get you'll see books that somebody else has done, and the list super long. They're just being way too specific with their expenses. That's real common to see, and they're not even and they don't even look at their financial statements. So it's like they're making their books messy and long, and uh, and they and they don't even look at them. So that's real common. Anyways, so. This particular sample company is a, a landscaping company and a design and landscaping company. And they have, uh, when, you're, when you're looking at this PL, you can kind of get a good idea of what type of income they have. And uh, uh, what type of expenses they have. So when you get a new client and they have existing books, this the the P and L and the balance sheet are the first things. I'm gonna put both of them up here because we're gonna talk about both of them at the same time. <clears throat> balance sheet. Um. So on the P and L, the P and L gives you a really good snapshot. Uh, it's it's over a period of time. So this is January through October. It's a, it's a sample company, so it's just all fake data. But, um, it it can give it gives you this is the first thing. This and the balance sheet are the first things you should look at when you're looking at a company because it gives you great insight into what's going on in that company um, and how they make money and how they spend their money. So you can quickly see that they have design income. And they have landscaping income. And so far this year, they make more money doing landscaping than they do design. Um, however, there is a cost of goods sold, and you have to determine is that uh, related to the design or the landscaping. So, but anyways, uh, now at the top, um, you have your income. These are the incomes. And then you go into the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold um, is the expenses that are directly related to the income provided. So a lot of times cost of goods sold will be the actual cost that they pay for something that they, they actually end up reselling. So there's a good chance this cost of goods sold, it relates to this design. Uh, they, they might be selling design things where they put, uh, pots and stuff, pots and plants and stuff like that. They go buy them from like a nursery and then they deliver them to a home and they charge extra for them typically. Um, so the income in that situation would be either landscape services or design services. Design services might be the actual, uh, actual creating a design 
and then the actual landscaping is them doing the actual work. So, um, and then cost of goods sold might be the actual, they go out and buy plants, that, that's a cost. That could be a cost of goods sold, and then they end up putting them in uh, into somebody's yard and then charging landscaping services for that. Uh, so you've got income coming in, that's a plus, and then you've got cost of goods sold offsetting that. That's why you see total income of 10,000 minus the cost of goods sold. That they call that gross profit. Gross profit is the income coming in minus cost of goods sold to arrive at gross profit. And gross profit is your income minus expenses directly related to the, the income, which is cost of goods sold. And then going down, it's just an alphabetical list of different types of expenses that you're going to see. And a lot of them that a lot of them you see across all most all businesses like rent, office expenses, meals and entertainment, um, automobile, and then you're going to see some in utilities. Then you're going to see some that are more specific to that industry. Um, so, but but just in general for this profit and loss definition is uh, you you've got income at the top minus expenses at the bottom comes to your net, net income. Just ignore this other expenses for now. Other expenses are typically small. Uh, this right here is a large number for miscellaneous expenses. They, they probably need a home. Miscellaneous expenses should be small. Um, everything should find a home, really. Miscellaneous means that they haven't really uh, figured out where it should go, maybe. Um, and then you also might have uh, some interest income sitting here or interest expense. That's kind of a other expense. So anyways, then, so you've got income or revenue minus your expenses to, to come to your net income or loss. So this could be a net, uh, net loss too, but they have a profit for this period of time of 1,642. So that's the profit and loss. Now let's look at the balance sheet. Any questions so far? All right, let's keep moving. All right, so the balance sheet, and I'll go over kind of the main things that you'll see on the balance sheet um, for small businesses and stuff like that. Okay, so from the top, you notice there's a line right here that separates assets from the bottom of the, uh, the balance sheet, which is liabilities and owner's equity, and lower liabilities and equity. And if you notice another thing here, assets equals liabilities plus equity. That is the golden rule, it has to, has to happen. Uh, the software prevents us from messing that up. But assets should always equal the total of liabilities and equity. You don't have to worry about that because the software takes care of it. And it's just, uh, it's just the, um, the science of accounting that it it this that system is designed to where that's always true. Back in the day, you could make a mistake of some some kind um, where things didn't tie out properly, and you could have a mistake. Um, but but now that there's software to prevent you from making mistakes and saving an entry that doesn't have equal debits and credits. Um, that's really that's the only reason way I can think of that would cause those two not to be equal. Is if you could somehow save a save an entry where debits do not equal credits, which they do, um, they always equal equal each other when you make an entry. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so from the top, let's talk about assets. This whole section right here is assets. There are different kinds of assets. Your your checking account is an asset. Any of your bank accounts are assets. Um, 
So those are, those are typically at the top. Then you get into your AR. AR is an asset, accounts receivable. And then you, you can have inventory, that's an asset. Um, this is undeposited funds. Um, you can have assets, what are called fixed assets. So, and uh, I'll define, define those in a second. Um, and then on, at the bottom, you'll see, so the, all that come, they total it all up and it comes to total assets, all right? The next section down is liabilities, which is what the company owes. So the assets are what they have or what is due to them in accounts receivable. Liabilities is what they owe going out. So liabilities be accounts payable, any credit cards they might have, any loans they might have, those are all in the liability section. So you see the liability section, and then total liabilities. The, again, this is a report that you should be looking at whenever you get a new client. The, the, the PL and this report tell you everything you know, need to know about that company, because you can drill down into any of these and find detailed information. But getting familiar with these reports is is key to being a good bookkeeper. Okay, so below liabilities is your equity section. So you're gonna have different equity names. You're gonna have open balance equity, owner's equity. Um, you can have member's equity, partner equity, but the, they're all equities. Um, and then you have what's called retained earnings, which is, uh, the accumulation of the net income from prior years goes into that. And then net income is the current net income. You see this number? It's the same that was on the PL report. At the bottom of the PL report, remember it said net income? It's here as well. So that's the layout of the balance sheet without getting too going down. To, a rabbit hole really. Um, but just start in, any clients that you have or get, you definitely want to run those two reports and and get familiar with, with them. Okay. So let's start defining a couple of these other words. Um, let's go let's, so let's go back over to the um, p &L. identify, label a couple things. Um, all right, okay, so gross income is, there's, there's two types of income based, there's two things I wanna talk about, gross income and net income. Gross income is, is right here, it's called gross profit here. You can, you can call it gross profit, gross income, same thing. Um, but it's basically your income minus any directly related uh, expenses that are uh, related to that or used to make that income, like cost of goods sold, uh, to come to gross. So you're going to hear that word, gro what's your gross? I grossed this last year, that, that kind of uh, thing. Um, what, and what you need to know is, oh, that's how much they made before expenses. So you hear like these, you hear on uh, TV or whatever, you can hear somebody say, oh, it's a $6 billion company. Does that mean gross? Because they could, they could be a $6 billion company, meaning, or they could say, oh, last year I made six, let's just, let's don't use it, such a big number. Let's say a client of yours says, uh, I made, um, $60,000 last year. Your, your question would be, is that gross? Because they could, they could make, they could have $60,000 of gross income and actually have a loss because they had so many expenses that offset all of that. Um, they could have a gross profit of 60. They could have $70,000 worth of expenses. So they would have a net income of negative $10,000. So when, that's just good to know is if 
somebody's throwing out numbers, are they talking about gross or net? So that's the difference. Net means they've accounted for all the expenses to offset the gross. So that's gross income and net income. Assets. Or everybody, I'm assuming everybody knows what an expense is, right? Expenses, money that you spend on stuff, a company spends on stuff. That's not a, a super high ticket item. Uh, when it's a high ticket item and that's going to be used over, over time in the course of making using it to make money, they would set it up as a fixed asset. So instead of if they bought, uh, so in this case, they're a landscaping company. If they buy a truck, the truck is not going to go down here as an expense because it's, say it's a, say it's a $20,000 truck. They're not going to drop in, and you got to be careful with this stuff. Don't drop in super high ticket items onto an uh, expense on, as an expense. It's a fixed asset. So let's jump back over there to the balance sheet. Can you see my whole screen, by the way? Or just the... Let's see what we got. I see the whole screen with the tabs and everything. Yeah, I can see the whole screen also. Okay, cool. So it, if you guys don't know, here's a little cool thing. You can duplicate this. You see that? So at the top, right click, duplicate. So it, it allows you when you're on uh, the online version, you can have two screens open at once. It's it's taken its sweet time to come up, but uh, if it does come up, I'll uh, put a balance sheet on one and a PL on the other. But um, come on. Losing, using a lot of resources here. Okay, so you can see both of these when I bounce back and forth. Is that what you're saying? Okay, so on the balance sheet, if if they buy so right here, they do have a truck. Okay, original cost thirteen thousand four ninety five. They didn't want to put that on the on the expense side of things. Let's say they paid cash for it. Uh, the cash going out to put a truck on. They don't want to write, an, a, they don't want to code it to an expense account because it's too, it's too much, the dollar amount is too high. And that truck is going to be used over a period of years to generate income. That's why it's a fixed asset. So they set it up as a fixed asset, which is here. It's on the, it's on the balance sheet and it's right here. Fixed assets, get depreciated over time. So the, and it's, they're depre different assets get depreciated over different periods of years. And it's based upon what's the revenue, it's basically um, based upon um, how many years do they, does that asset typically hold out for? And, uh, is productive and helps create revenue for the company, okay? So trucks can have five years, seven years uh, a work truck, um, and they'll get what's called depreciated over time. And this is what the tax preparer will, this is a number that the tax preparer will give you um, at the end of the year because they have the depreciation schedule. They have the amortiz amortiz amortization schedule of, how how much that truck should be depreciated each year. There's different types of depreciation. I won't get into that. But some depreciation is the same every year. And some depreciation is more in the first years and, and uh, decreases over time. Things that assets that they get more use out of them in the first years. And then as they get older, they are less useful. But um, so they, they set the stroke up as a fixed asset and we don't, it looks like it's the first year of this. 
So there's no, I don't see any accumulated depreciation. Yep. So that they got the truck in August 1st of 2022. So it's a new asset. All right, so let's, what else should we talk about here? Uh, I told you what liabilities are. Um, okay, let's talk about AP and AR. So let's start with AR since it's at the top. So AR, would, like I told you, is an asset and it's what people owe the company. People that owe the company money, how much do they owe the company money? How much money do they owe the company? Um, that's pretty cut and dry. Those typically uh, traded with an invoice. Um, and I'll go over the entries that, do the, that create these things here in a bit. Same thing with AR, it's just money going the other way or what money owed going the other way. It's the company owing other, be, other people and businesses money and it's, it's captured with accounts payable. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, I told you about cost of goods sold. All right, let's talk about accrual versus cash. Um, see how this is flagged for accrual. Uh, cash is, so there's two different, two main different ways to uh, account for books and that's the cash basis they're called accounting methods the cash basis and the accrual basis cash basis is uh when entries are only made on the books when uh there's a movement of cash that's the cash basis so income is recognized when money is actually received it's not when it's owed to you Accrual is when it's, you recognize it when it's owed to you. Same thing with um, money that you owe other people. You don't, you wouldn't, uh, on a accrual basis, you recognize like an, the expense, even though you haven't paid them, paid the money yet, you owe the money. It's an, it's an accounts payable. If that same situation was done on the cash basis, there would be no entry in the books, even though you owed the, uh, you owed somebody some money. It would, there'd be no entry in the books until there was a movement of cash, until you actually paid that bill. So QuickBooks does this thing where um, it, it, it kind of gives you a hybrid of, uh, you can have it run as kind of a hybrid. Um, but um, a lot of small businesses are cash basis. I'd say the majority of small businesses are cash basis, but that's something that you'll have to look for. That's something that's on the tax return. So <clears throat> when you're doing the books, when you, this, it, the reason this is important, not only just kind of, it's important to kind of know the difference between cash versus accrual, uh, just for your own knowledge, but when you are generating reports for your clients, you should generate them on the same basis that they have their tax returns done. Because if you're generating reports, reports on say the cash basis and their tax returns are done on the accrual and they, and they keep track, you know, they keep an eye on their financials, they're going, you know, they may be happy or sad when um, it's time to do their taxes and the numbers are quite different than what they, what you've been showing them for a period of time. So it's important piece of information that you should know for your clients so that you know which reports to give them. And should you run it on cash or accrual? So this, so when we're looking at cash here, you see, there's, see the changes here? Let me do this. Let's start here. Let's look at the accrual. You see this right here? Accounts receivable, accounts payable. That's the accrual basis. We switch it over to cash. Those accounts are gone because on cash basis, 
there is no payable. There is no receivable on cash basis because you only recognize those entries when people pay you what they owe you or you pay people what you owe them. But majority of the clients that you're gonna have are cash basis. Uh, if they're small businesses, right? We're gonna get into debits and credits here rather quickly uh, through the use of journal entries I'm gonna show you. All right, and so real quick, I'll show you chart of accounts. Okay, so this is, the chart of accounts is, um, is basically just it's what it says. It's a, just a list of all the accounts that you have set up and that you use or could potentially use. I don't recommend that you try to create a chart of accounts before you get into your books. I create chart of accounts as I go. So I like to have a clean chart of accounts. I don't like to have just a bunch of accounts in here that I never use. You, you want your books to be, to be simple, clean. You don't want to have stuff hanging out there that you don't even ever use. So I usually start with the most basic chart of accounts and I built it as I, as I go and as I need it. I don't spend any time on the front end of, with the client uh, creating a chart of accounts. As I, getting into, as, I get, as I do their books, I create the chart of accounts. Now the system automatically creates the main accounts. Um, but like if, you know, let's say they had four bank accounts um, and two credit cards, I wouldn't create all those first and then start doing the books. I would do the, I'd create those as I did the books. Same thing with the expenses. Like if they had, um, see how many incomes they have? They have this many incomes, but we only saw a, a handful of them on the, on the P&L. So um, you'll see that people overuse accounts a lot. Um, but like, let's say advertising, I wouldn't have created an advertising account until I needed to create an advertising account, et cetera. So th that's the chart of accounts though. It's just what it sounds like. And nothing you need to spend time on creating until you need, until you need to. Okay. So, all right, we're doing good on time, I think. Okay, so let's see. What do I want to show you? Okay, we have a PL open, and let's. Uh, open the balance sheet. All right, so now I wanna make some common uh, entries and show you how they, how they affect these uh, statements. Because remember what I said, every transaction that you ever make in the books is either going to hit the balance sheet or the P&L, both, or just one. You can have an you can have an entry that's hits strictly the balance sheet. You're gonna have an entry that hits strictly the PL, and you can have an entry that that hits both in the same entry. So let's see. So let's start making some entries and see how they hit the books. Okay. So there's different ways to uh, enter things and I'm not going to get into like the different you, you can go strictly into the checking register and enter things directly into the register uh, and that's fine understand that one side one side of the equation is going to be if you're in the checking register one side of the equation is going to be the check because you're in the checking register uh, so anytime you're in one of the registers which um, 
see if this pops up real quick. You what, I'll show you what registers are. These are reg the, in the chart accounts here. These are the registers for these accounts. See, it says view register. So you can go into the checking register and you can make an entry directly into this. You can add a check. Today's date, whatever number, payable to whomever. Looks like this is set up. You add a memo. Um, 10 bucks, let's say for cost of goods sold. This entry right here is, a, is hitting, it, it looks like it's just hitting the cost of goods sold account, but it's, it's hitting the checking account as well. There's, there can never be one account that's hit when you make it, when an entry is being made. It always, every entry into your books is hitting two or more accounts. In this case, it's hitting the checking account because you're in the checking register and it's, and it's also hitting cost of goods sold, okay? So let's, uh, so I just wanted to make sure you're clear on that. All right. Um, so let's do a couple of entries, okay? What I'm going to show you is not to, not using the uh, register. I, I, I think you should use the register, but how I'm gonna show you what, what's actually happen, be, happening behind the scenes, I'm gonna use what's called journal entries. If you're entering something in the checking account, I recommend you go into the checking register like we just did and enter it there. Uh, but I'm going to show you what's, what are called journal entries so that you could see both sides. Because notice you could only see, you couldn't even, you couldn't see even what's, what's a debit and what's a credit in the register. You just have, you have to kind of know. But by using journal entries, I'll be able to uh, show you what, deb what are debits and credits, and which is something that every bookkeeper should learn over time. You, I'm sure you've all heard of debits and credits, um, but how they hit your books is, is important to know. Okay, debits are always on the left. Credits are always on the right. And the total of this column and the total of this column always equals. That's why your balance sheet can never get messed up because we have software these days. Back in the old days when things were done on paper, things could get messed up, but a software prevents things from getting messed up. Okay, so let's make an entry for, um, okay, we're gonna, let's do an entry for cash income. So income made by cash. Somebody gives you cash, gives your client cash, uh, for services rendered, okay? So there's going to be, in this case, there's gonna be a debit and a credit. You know money come, is coming in. Um, so this is uh, cash income. Cash income. Now, I know that in order to increase cash, it has to be a debit because a, a credit to cash is a decrease in cash. So as you go along, you're going to start learning what a debit increases and what a debit can decrease and what a credit can increase and what a credit can decrease. And the different account types which is like income, expenses, assets, liabilities, equity. It, it affects, there's no like just one way. Debits don't always increase accounts. It can, it can increase some and a debit can also decrease some. 
But as far as an asset is concerned, a debit to an asset is an increase. So that you should learn. So in this case, they have a checking account and we want to increase that checking account by because they just sold a service, okay? They just sold something for a thousand bucks. So we need a debit to increase checking. And they sold a service. This is gonna be an income account. So let's see what kind of income they have. We know, so we can look over at their balance sheet or their uh, income statement and see what kind of incomes they have. We'll just pick one. Pest control services, how about that one? So keep in mind, let's take a look at it right now. It's sitting at 110, 110 bucks. We're about, they, they're about to make $1,000 more pest control services. And if this thing works <laughs> and updates, it should increase. So see how it automatically defaulted? I didn't have, I didn't have to check it. I didn't have to type it in. And that's because it's, um, it, it automatically fills. They might have two, a couple different types of income. Um, they might be receiving a thousand dollars for labor, labor installation. Let's, let me show you that real quick. So let's say they made 800 bucks here. Labor installation, the, the other 200 for labor installation, okay? You see how debits, a thousand, equal credits, a thousand. That has to happen. Um, and then let's save this entry and see what, see how it affects the p and on the balance sheet. And I can tell you, because I know how what account goes where, the checking is on the balance sheet and the income accounts are on the p and So we should see changes on the balance sheet and we should see changes on the uh, income statement. So let's look at what the balance sheet says right now first before we save it, okay? So the checking account is sitting at 1201. So checking is at 1201 before we hit save. Pest control is sitting at 110. Pest is at 110. And labor install is at two. These are just check triggers so that we can see that the software is working. Okay. So now let's hit save and see how it hits the uh, statements. Okay, just saved it. Now let's look. Let me see if this is hitting right. Yep. Okay. So we had a check. We had before we hit save, right? We had eleven or one thousand two hundred one. After we added a thousand to it, it did change to twenty two hundred one. So we, see, we do know that it, that entry was saved in the system, but you see how that entry increased the cash because they received cash of $1,000. And then we're gonna look at the PL and these numbers should change too. Switching over to cash, let's see. Which might mess things up, let me make sure. Pest control, what was that before? Hang on a second. Okay, I'm well, gonna leave it on approval because that's what we started at, our check numbers. Okay, so we, here was our entry, remember? Debit, debit to cash or checking account. By the way, shorthand for debit is DR. So we debited 1,000 and we did, Pest control, and this is how it's typically written. The debit is over here, and then the credit is indented. 
that's actually an indicator that debits are over here and credits are over here. So here's the checking. And then pest control, we did, I think, 800. And labor, we did 250. No, 200. Sorry. You guys should have, you guys should have hollered at me. Um, nobody caught that. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's see if that happened. So we're looking at labor. Okay, pest control, we had, we had it at 110. We added 800 to it, so it should be 9, 910. It is. Labor install, why is that 250? That's what was throwing me off. Why is that? Let me see. Hang on a second. Let's see what I did. Let's see what entry. See, it? I can always just pull up the entry that I did. So here's the entry. Oh, I put it down as an expense. That's why. So here, let's go. You got to be careful not to make any mistakes like I just did. I put it to an expense account. What the heck here? Hang on, hang with me here. We're getting there, believe it or not. We want, uh, labor installation. Why don't we do this landscaping services? Because it's a lot easier to see. Landscaping services. Okay. That check figure is before they it saved 1477. Good. I hope I'm not losing you guys. All right. So landscaping services is 1477 before saving the century. We're going to add 200 to it. Let's refresh this. Sixteen seventy-seven. See that just went up by two hundred, which is the two hundred that we have here. Okay, so sorry about that. That that's. Uh, I hope that I didn't lose anybody in there. Did I? If you got, if I did, holler. So that entry, which let me pull it up again, so we can just take a look at it again. Um. I lost my balance sheet. All right, check me. See how you can just keep drilling down into these? Makes it easy. Okay, so the checking should have went up on the balance sheet, should have went up by a thousand bucks. It did, we, we confirmed it. And the income accounts, pest control services went up by 800 on the, on the income statement or the P&L and landscaping services, which is also a revenue account or income account, went up by 200. We, we, we double checked all those uh, check figures and so it worked. So that's, 
that's an entry for receiving uh, income with cash. So that entry hit the checking account, okay? Now, something. what if they got paid? What if they uh, didn't get paid? Let's say they did the service. They did the pest control service, did the landscaping. So they earned that money, but they haven't received that money yet. So then that would be, an in, that would be an accounts receivable. So these two would stay the same. The, the income accounts would stay the same, but they didn't receive the money. So the checking account can't be correct. It's actually an AR. So when you, if, if you have a client or you send out an AR report, or I mean, send out an invoice, this is the entry that you'll see here. This entry right here is what happens when an invoice is sent out. An invoice, an invoice that is sent out that not paid yet. What happens is the income accounts get recognized, which we have here, and it, the offset is accounts receivable. That money is still owed to them. So this is how it would look for that initial entry. So when, when they do something for cash, like in the last en entry, it's just one entry. They, they receive the money and they code it to the revenue accounts that uh, it goes to, the debits and credits. Uh, when they don't receive the money, but they still provided the services, it, it's accounts receivable that gets hit and the, the revenue accounts get hit. And then at a later date, the money comes in. When the, when the client pays the money, you're going, this is the entry that gets made. So the, the initial entry, which is when you send out an invoice, uh, this is what happens. This can be broken down into many different line items, but this is the bare bones of what's happening. That's what an invoice does. It creates an AR and one income account or many income accounts. When that money is received, so that's the just when the when the work is done and you send out an invoice. When that money is received, this is what happens. That's what happens when the money is received against an invoice. They initially the accounts receivable is going to go up because they owe they owe 50 bucks Steve are you changing so I don't see anything changing I'm still on the same screen the oh. AR oh I'm sorry you can't you can there's no little box of me no okay, it's, can't say it it's too small Okay. There you go. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sound effects. I love it. Uh, so, okay. So this is when an invoice is created. All right. Can you guys see that? All right. Okay. So when an invoice is created, you're what you're basically doing is establishing an AR, and you're also recognizing the revenue. That's the revenues uh, recognized at that point in time. And then when they, when they pay, uh, your client or their client pays uh, against that uh, invoice, this is the entry that happens. Money comes in and the accounts receivable goes away for that particular, if, it, if they paid the full amount. If they paid less than a full amount, like if, the, if they paid say 40 bucks, this is what it would look like. What do you think AR is looking like at the end of this? $10. That's right. That's right. 
So they would still have an AR sitting out there at 10 bucks. And then let's say they later paid, paid the rest. That, that's the entry that's happening when they pay the rest. Put your eyes on Anthony. <laughs> so, okay, so that's, those are the two. And if you see what's happening here, let's make these the same again, get rid of this for, so it doesn't cause confusion. What's happening here is this, because they paid the full amount, you see what's happening here. You've got a debit of this. The net effect of these is this, which is the same as what was we had before. AR is just like a holding holding spot for what is still owed you or your client. All right. So that's the two ways that money could come in. Um, so let's do the opposite of that, money going out, okay? Now, an increase in expense would be a debit or a credit, what do you guys think? And the way you can remember these is think about, think always know what one thing does and you can kind of back your way into what other things do. What we already learned, is it a debit or a credit to increase cash? Debit. If you increase cash, is that a debit or a credit? Debit. Yep, that's right. So now we're buying something. We're creating an expense with cash. We're using cash. So what would happen? What would happen to the cash? Is that a debit or a credit? Credit. That's right. So start there. Start with what you know. 50 bucks. Notice I indented that. I, I did indent that, by the way. And let's say they bought office supplies. Fifty bucks. This is debit. Shorthand for debit for some reason is DR. I don't know why. But the abbreviation for debit is DR. Get used to it like I had to. Credit makes more sense, CR. Okay. This is what's happening. All right. So this is, they went out and bought a uh, toner for the printer and they paid cash or checking or the checking account. Let's use checking. Because cash means something different. Okay, so the, they use their checking account to buy office, office expenses. That's the entry for that. What if they didn't use their checking account? They use an accounts payable. They still owe that money. They got the, they got the toner for 50 bucks. The expense gets recognized but they didn't pay for it yet. So this is gonna be like an A, P, which could be like a credit card. Very common, right? They haven't paid for it yet. When they do pay for it, this is what happens. Checking, debit, That's what's happening. This is when they got it. They didn't pay for it. They created a, an expense account. Or uh, they created an expense account and, set, and they set up a liability, which is typically like a credit card, okay? 
But in the, in this case, they would typically uh, use a credit card. And then when they when they paid it, they paid the credit card. That's the payment of the credit card. Whenever anybody uses a credit card, this is what's happening. When we when we use our credit card, we go out to dinner, dining expense. 50 bucks credit card, which is a liability. We owe that money to the credit card company. We got dinner, but we haven't paid for it yet. And then when we pay our credit card later, credit card we pay, and we pay it out of our check. Make sense? But if we just paid it out of cash, it would just be dining. Credit to cash. So it's either one, it's either done with one step if you're using the cash or checking account, or it's done with two steps if you're using an accounts payable or accounts receivable. It just depends, it depends on if the, the cash has moved yet. If the cash hasn't moved, you're gonna be using those accounts. If the cash is moving, then you're not. Okay, so that's, any questions on that? Yeah, so Steve, if you're, if you're handling it, if you're only handling cash basis counting, would you eliminate that? The AR and the AP piece of those, that's those transactions? Technically, okay. technically there is no AR and AP in cash basis. Right. But QuickBooks, you could still enter that stuff. Okay. So you could, okay. Even though you're handling the client as a cash basis, you can still. Yeah. It's just how the uh, reports are generated. Okay. Because. Hmm. Typically, there's credit cards. So. And this is the first time that I'm actually thinking of credit cards in that way as being, as affecting the AP account. Um, well, it's a liability. It's, it's a liability. A lot of times they have it. Um, they have it in a different section, but it's in the liability section. It's a liability. Okay, so when you run the report, a report, and you do it in accrual, no, if you do it in cash, you're not going to see the numbers that are affected by the credit cards. Sorry, okay. Um, I'm going to poke around and explore that a little bit because for some reason that's just confusing to me, but I think I have to see it. And, um, because you know, I guess when you're like when you're when you have your bank feed and you're entering in those transactions or categorizing them, like oftentimes with credit cards, you're transferring um, like payments. I just don't. And I, I guess I don't. I don't see the big picture of like what what you're actually doing. Like when you're transferring, um, entering a transaction as a transfer, say from you know, credit from bank account to credit card, how that ties into AP. Um, okay. But again, I don't feel like I have a clear question. I'm just kind of confused. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, well, you can elaborate on it if you have something to elaborate on, but. Yeah, let's do that. Let's look okay. at, don't think about, don't think about AP and don't, it's a, a credit card. I mean, I think QuickBooks separates it out as, and the, uh, I think QuickBooks actually has a it actually has a hybrid of the two, cash and accrual. Uh, I think if you select cash basis, you can pull it up and look uh, on the balance sheet. I think it's still going to have the credit cards sitting there. Uh, it just won't have quote unquote AP, but uh, a credit card is a payable. Um, it's a liability. 
it's what's owed. Uh, but let me show it. Let, maybe let's show. Uh, let's show a typical uh, credit card, right? Okay. Entries come in. Uh, let's, you know, they went out to, they went out for meals. They bought some office supplies. Uh, and paid utilities. Let's say this is just in a, a given month, okay? To, a credit card, each one of these would be a separate line item. But let's let's put them all together. Utilities, they paid some, they paid their utility expenses, okay? So uh, these are debits, right? D E R C R. And then here's the credit card. Because to increase an expense, it's a debit. To increase a credit card, it's credit. Okay. That's what's happening behind the scenes when all of us use our credit card. We're having we're creating, we're getting having debits for things that we're buying and spending money on, and we're setting up a liability, an increase in liability is a credit. When you pay that credit card, when you set it up, it's credit. To decrease a credit card, so this increases the balance of a credit card. You want to decrease the balance of the credit card by paying it. So you, if you did a credit before, you get to do a debit. A debit is a decrease to, to liability. And you're gonna pay it out of your check. Because remember, what's our fallback? What's our default? Checking. What's an increase to checking? Debit. Which means a decrease to checking is a credit. So these should kind of always, you'll start to, if you spend energy on learning this stuff, it'll always be behind, uh, going on in the back of your head, what's going on, debits and credits. And it's important to know this stuff because there are times when you have to make journal entries. And we'll get into the most common one that you, that you see um, with the small business and people that co-mingle funds. All right, so should we do that now? Why well, I still have you? Does that make sense to everybody? This is what's happening with the credit card. Yep. Yes. This, yes. Is setting up, this is setting up what you owe, and this is paying what you owe on the credit card. Okay. Um, okay, let's do this. Would that be recorded as a transfer? Transfer. It's not really under the strict definition of a transfer. Okay. Transfer is more reserved for the move, moving money from one account to another. Um, the, the first part of that would have been charged to your credit card. And the second thing, the second thing would have been a payment to your credit card. I, would, I wouldn't use the word transfer in there. Okay. Now, if you did this, let's say you had a checking account and a savings account, and you're moving uh, 100 bucks from one to the other, that would be a transfer. You're transferring money from one account to another. So, what would happen to these? Anybody? What what does this entry do to the checking and savings account? Checkings increase, savings decreased. Yeah, it's a transfer from savings to checking. Because these are asset accounts, they're both assets. And a debit to an asset is an increase, a credit to an asset is a decrease. So we know that just by seeing this entry, this is a debit and this is a credit. 
we know just by seeing this what's happening. The, what's happening is they're moving $100 from their savings to their checking. Because we know that it's a debit and credit. So if you know that, then you know the inverse of that, which is, I want to do this. What's the entry to do this? Anybody confused? Or is everybody on, on, on the mark? No, it's helpful. Yeah, it's good. Good yeah. stuff. This is my first time teaching it, so. Um, <laughs> You're doing well. Oh, <laughs> Give you a grade later. Yeah, we'll break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll, we'll get together on that one. It's just we'll give you a, we'll give you a debit on the grade. <laughs> is, it, is it an asset? Okay. Asset, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, thank you. That's an entry. Right. Okay. Um, so let's look at a fixed asset. Okay. Let's say they buy they spend money, right? So we're learn we've learned that check. Let's say they spend money out of their checking. They wrote a check. For a thousand bucks. So, uh, I won't get into that. Okay. So, they, they, they spent a thousand dollars on something. Let's make it 20,000. Make it real. They bought a truck for their landscaping business and they paid cash for it. There's no loan set up for this. There, if there's be a different entry for that, and maybe I'll get into that. Okay. So, they, uh, they spent. Debit and credit. They spent twenty thousand dollars out of their checking for a truck. You need to set the truck up as a fixed asset. So the asset type is a fixed asset. And what's this word? Asset increase of. So the other side of this equation. Remember. Debits always have to equal credits. The total of all the debits in the entry has to equal the total of all the credits. So they have set up this fixed asset, the truck. That would be the entry for this if they paid. That's what's going on behind the scenes. What you're only seeing in, in, in QuickBooks is you go into the checking register and you enter 20000 Payable to who you know, whoever the vendor is, uh, twenty thousand dollars, and you code it to truck, and you set that up as a fixed asset. That's what you see in the check register. But this is the actual accounting entry that goes on behind the scenes. This is what the uh, software is handling. So, what happens with fixed assets is they get depreciated over time. So at the end of the, let's say it's a, a, a five-year life, okay? And let's say they bought it on January 1st of the whatever year. At the end of the year, they want to depreciate. It's called straight. It, this is too much information, but straight line depreciation means the exact same amount of depreciate, depreciation every year. And if it's a five-year asset, it means... Each year in those five years, it's going to be the same amount. So what would it would be twenty thousand dollars be divided by five? So it'd be four four thousand dollars. If I could still do math, it'd be four thousand dollars every year. Okay. So year one, the 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 entry that the tax preparer will give you for this truck will be a depreciation entry. That's that's very common that bookkeepers are going to see. Bookkeepers do the books throughout the year. They turn it over to whoever's preparing the tax return. The tax preparer does what they need to do with it. And they also give you a handful of journal entries to make. And this is a very common one that you'll, you'll need to make. And it's the depreciation for their assets. And in this case, you're going to see this. So debits and credits. <clears throat> depreciation expense it, what, what statement do expenses fall in fall into balance sheet or income statement p and l p and l yep so this would be just another entry 
another line item on, on that P&L, depreciation expense. The offset to this entry is called accumulated depreciation. That is a balance sheet account. So on that, on that report that we're looking at, it had truck. We, we already confirmed that it's the first year that they had it. That's why we didn't see any accumulated depreciation. But on that balance sheet, what you'd see is truck. After making this entry, you'd see truck for $20,000. And you'd see it underneath it, you'd see accumulated depreciation. And after year one, you'd see $4,000 there. So the net of that asset, that fixed asset, would be $16,000. That's the value of that asset after year one. Year two goes by. You give, you give your very clean, beautiful books to the tax preparer. He works his magic doing his taxes, he gives you journal entry to make for, the, for depreciation expense. Because this is a straight line, meaning it's the same every year, it's over five years. Year two is going to be the exact same as year one. So this entry is the exact same as the previous year. So you have depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. Then you look at to, so you look at your PL for that year. And you're going to see another $4,000 sitting there as an expense. And you're going to look at your balance sheet. And you're going to see this. This is your one. This is your two. You're down to $12,000 on that asset. So the asset now, which started at $20,000, is now on your balance sheet at $12,000. And it'll go down each year until it's zero. That's called a fully depreciated asset. So this will go on until they either sold the truck or it got fully depreciated. I won't show you the entry for selling the vehicle because it's, uh, I don't want to blow up your brain too much. Okay, let's, here's another common thing. So that's a, that one's really common because the tax preparer every year is going to get, if they have assets on the books, uh, the tax preparer is going to give you journal entries to make for the depreciation and accumulated depreciation of those assets. And they'll, they'll usually actually give you debits and credits. So you don't have to try to figure it out. But it might just say, yeah, the depreciation on the truck was $4,000. Then you got to know, you need to know what entry to make it. And I would just, in that case, I would always just code it December 31st of the, that year, and it'd be depreciation expense accumulated depreciation. Uh, let's, let, here's another common thing that bookkeepers see loans. Um, and payment on loans. So we all know, right, typically, unless it's an interest-only loan, there's interest in principal when, whenever a payment is made on a loan, okay? So let's say um, the business gets a $5,000 loan, okay? They get into their checking, $5,000. That's a debit, right? Increased cash. They just got 5,000 bucks, but they have a loan for it. 5,000 bucks. Remember a liability to increase, a loan is a liability. They owe that. Increase a loan, increase the liability, it's, it's a credit. Okay, that's why it's over here. So, that's setting up the loan. This is setting up the loan. So 
they received it and it establishes the loan. Now they're gonna pay. So over time they have to pay on that loan. So this is something that a bookkeeper will see a lot is they'll see a payment to the, the lender. And let's say they're paying 500 bucks. Okay. Money going out is what? Credit, right? So we know what the credit is. So checking. That's shorthand for 500 bucks. We know they're paying 500 bucks. What are the, what's the other side of the equation? If there's principal and interest. You know, you have a piece of it would be debit to, to loan payable. And then would you have to calculate the interest? To, uh, interest piece would go to expense. That's right, exactly. So in this entry, you know, this, this has two, two line items, right? Setting it up, but the actual payment's three. There's a principal piece, which is they're paying against the loan. And there's interest expense. Let's say 450 goes towards the principal, 50 bucks goes towards the interest. So they made a payment of 500, but it only decreased, it didn't decrease the loan by 500, it decreased the loan by the principal piece. So there's always principal and interest on loans, not always, but typically. So you have to get that breakout. And with your bookkeeping business, your clients, you'll need to get uh, either the statements from the lender that break it out. You, if you've looked, if you've ever had a loan and you look at it, it'll the, the statement that you get will show you the breakdown of the previous payment that you made. So what'll happen a lot of times when, when doing bookkeeping is uh, you'll code $500 going out and you just code it all to the loan because you don't know the interest piece yet until after the fact. So it's typically, you, you write this out for 500, put all 500 to loan, and then the next month, you actually get the statement that shows how this was broken out. So you get that statement, or you see that statement, and uh, you might have online access or whatever, which would be great, and you can see how that previous payment was broken out between principal and interest. And you look back at it, you say, oh, it was, it was only 450 went to, so when you initially when you initially put it in, do it like this, and just put zero there, and then you get this. Then you get the statement because typically interest is charged on a daily basis, so you don't know how this payment's going to how much interest is going how much is going to go to interest when you make that payment. You don't know that until after the fact. You you learn that later. So then you find out later. Oh, okay, the breakout was this. 450 went here and 50 went to interest. This hits your PL as an expense, and you just decreased your loan by. So here's the running total of your loan, just on the side. It started at 5,000 bucks, and you just made a payment of 450. So your loan balance now, oh God, <laughs> 40. 4550. <laughs> okay. Am I right? I think so. I'm, for, I'm brain fried. Okay. So then you, you got a running total. Your books are going to keep track of that. This is the loan balance on your PL is going to tell you what it's sitting at after you break this out. When you initially code it all to, to loan, it's going to be wrong. But that's okay. It's just a temporary wrong. So that's a loan payment with interest. Okay. Sometimes it's delayed. There's a timing to you just gotta put it all to one and so that you can get this in so that you can reconcile your checking account. You gotta get it in. 
but you don't know how it's broken out yet. So you just code it all to loan. Remember? Then you go back later and change. But you got this in so that you could reconcile the checking account. You just pull, you just pull up, you don't make another journal entry to fix that. You, you pull up this journal entry and change it and then save it. You're just gonna edit that journal entry. You don't make another journal entry to, to fix it. <clears throat> I see people trying to do that. Only thing that does is make more, more journal entries and the, the trail just gets uh, cluttered and cloudy and hard to follow. Anytime you wanna change a transaction, or fix a transaction, do it. Just edit that transaction. All right, I think this might be the final example, unless you guys can think of something. Um, and this is very common, you guys see it all the time, and I, I, I addressed it some time ago. Typically, small business owners will buy stuff with their own money. It doesn't hit the, the business bank account, it doesn't hit their business credit card. They go out and they spend X amount of money on something and they pay for it out of their own pocket, okay? Well, they still, you still want to account for the, if it was an expense, you still want to account for that. Otherwise, they're going to have too high of a profit. They're going to be paying taxes on a profit that's not even accurate. So you, you want to capture those expenses. So let's say they go out and they spend, uh, they, they buy some office supplies. They forget their business credit card or business, whatever, debit card, office supplies. And let's say they spend 300 bucks. Remember, this is an expense account. To increase the expense, it's a debit, okay? Now, this is incorrect. This is not correct. That says checking. It's not correct because they didn't use the checking account. They used their personal account. That's not the business checking account. So that would be you that would be an item that never gets reconciled on your on your business checking account because it never hit the business checking account. It hit their personal account. Remember, they paid this out of personal funds. Personal funds, personal money. They spent $300 out of their personal money for office supplies. This captures what they need, what you need to capture so that it hits the PL, it lowers the profit in the company, less, less profit, less taxes to pay, and, and it's also accurate. Okay. This is not an account personal account. This is where it gets coded to. Equity. This is the entry for when they buy something. It say office supplies out of their personal account. This has to be done with the journal entry. I mean, you could go into the register. This would be a journal entry. Got it. Now, this is so common. I mean, <laughs> what I ask my clients is on a monthly basis. Okay, for September, did you buy anything out of your, did you buy anything for the business out of your, out of your personal money? And they know, you, you train them. You, they know to keep a list of that stuff over the month. So then when you ask for it, they have it all ready for you already. They don't have to think about it. And they just send you a list of, you know, I spent 50 bucks this month on office supplies. And you make this entry for 50 bucks. Now, so that's, that's, this is equivalent to them putting money in the company. Let's say the checking account was running low. The business checking account was running low. On, on funds. 
and they wanted they so they needed to replenish they needed to put some money into the business account the entry to do that would be this let's say they turn they transfer they do an online movement of money for 500 bucks remember this is increasing the business account by 500 bucks and it came from their personal money equity they are putting money into the company a credit a credit to equity is an increase to equity This is also an increase. A debit to an asset is an increase of that asset. So that's them moving money. If I saw this entry, I would know, oh, they took 500 of their dollars and they put it into the check. Because I know by looking at this, the checking account went up because it's a debit to the checking account. So, so Steve, if, if, that, if that was a startup business, say, let's say it was $5,000 and 3,000 went into the check and then 2,000 went and bought supplies or website, things like that. All of that would go into equity as a credit, right? And, they, and the debits would be the checking account for three, the balance 2,000 would all be those supplies, website, all that stuff, correct? Exactly. It'd be like the combination of these two. I'm so glad you made this clear, you know, my investment head says equity should be positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it takes a while to wrap the brain around. I get it. Yeah. it's a credit, it. and the different accounts and what increases them. But yeah, that would be, uh, you know, they're starting up, right? They need to fund the checking account. They put three thousand dollars into the checking account. They also bought office supplies out of their personal funds. Yeah. Uh, let's say a thousand bucks of that. Let's leave it at that. This could go on and on and on. Uh, before, before a business gets uh, their own, their business checking account set up, this, this happens. Uh, before the business, this is happening with you guys, before you get your business uh, bank account set up, you're incurring expenses. Bookkeeping life is an expense. Might have bookkeeping life here. Whatever. And then the offset, let's say it's a thousand bucks. <laughs> per month? <laughs> a thousand bucks a month. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> so they, they've increased their equity in the company by 5,000 bucks by bringing this to the company. They're putting this into the company. And it increases their equity by five grand. So that's when they contribute to the companies. But we Steve, all know. Excuse yep. me. What is the expense for a bookkeeping life? What it, is it, the. It could be education expense. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, Steve, I was going to, yeah, that's, that was the question I was going to ask you. So, when I get my business checking set up mm -hmm. and I want to transfer all those previous expenses that I put maybe it might be on a credit card or that I, how what do, would the transaction be it still be debit to bookkeeping life right and it still go to equity the same or or just a transfer how's that work how would that yeah work? so this is kind of it would be this it would be education yeah right Bookkeeping life is the vendor. Maybe this is the education and training. Huh? What's that? Maybe it would be education and training account expense, something. It doesn't matter. Education expense, education and training expense. It's training is education. So and it still goes to equity, right? The credit is gonna go. So you're putting that money into your bit. Is that but the credits? That's where I get confused on where the credit side well, would be equity, right? Or, or would it? Be? Yeah. 
now let's well it depends <laughs> is that money is only during setup but when you already have uh set up your checking account it would be like uh debit uh education and credit the checking account that's the equity if, is yeah. the first entry only that, that's right. that's if that's if you're going to take the money out of the company so let's look at that scenario let's talk about bookkeeping life expenses okay education expense it, again you can make this as short or long-winded as you want it doesn't matter so let's say 100 bucks here so that's setting up that's that's capturing the expense so that it hits your 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 PL, you're good to go. You two two different things can happen here. Do you want to take the money out of the company? Or do you not care to take the money out of the company? If you want to take the money out of the company, write a check to yourself or move the money. Doesn't matter how you do it. That's the that's the entry that would happen. And you just make that into the check, check register. But this is what's going on behind the scenes, the debits and credits. If you didn't, don't care about that 100 bucks, what would this be? Because you're not taking the money out of the checking. What would Equity. Equity. That's right. That's right. So you would just make an entry for this. Okay. Cool. Great. Okay. So that's increasing your equity. There are times that you're going to decrease that they, you or they might decrease equity. All right. So equity increased with the credit. That means equity decreases with the debit. You're out, you go somewhere to get your hair done, and then you realize, oh, it's cash only. They don't take the credit cards, okay. So you need to take some cash, you hit the, tape, the old ATM, and take 100 bucks out of the check. So checking is going to decrease by hundred bucks, and you're, it's for personal uses. This is the entry that that would look like. If if we're talking about your business, you take an, you're take if you anytime you take money out of the company, it would it would look like this. Money's going out. Your equity's going down. So it'd be debit, debit to equity, credit to checking. <clears throat> Here's another example. Let's say you go do some bookkeeping. And Okay, they, you go do some bookkeeping and they give you a hundred bucks while you're there. Say thanks. And you don't put that money into the business account. You just put it in your pocket. That's okay to do that. But if you don't make the entry for it, you're committing tax fraud. <laughs> <laughs> So the entry to do that was is recognize the revenue. So bookkeeping revenue. This is an entry that this is what the entry would look like if you went somewhere they paid they paid you a hundred bucks and you it didn't you notice what's not here is the checking account. If you put it into the checking account, this is what it would look like. But since you decided to just put it in your pocket and use it for personal use, this is what it looks like. 
equity. It's the exact same as if this was done in two steps, which is like cash, cash came in, revenue was recognized, you took cash out, decrease in equity, cat and cash out. What else? This is called a draw. So when a when a business owner takes money out of the company, it's called a draw. They're drawing money out of the company. The other one that we talked about before this, where they're putting equity into the company, is called a contribution. They're contributing their equity to the company. So it's called a contribution. They're drawing equity out of the company in this case. Any questions? Any scenarios that have happened to you guys yet that you'd like to see the, uh, the background on? I'm good. It's a lot to take in at once. Yeah, I'm good. Um, maybe another time we'll go over debits, credits. What what increase? What accounts increase with debits? What accounts increase with credits? Because they're not all the same. Not all debt. Not all debits increase accounts. But. We, I think we covered, we definitely covered all the main ones, all the main scenarios. Oh, for sure. This was really good. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Very good. Cool. I'm glad it was helpful. Love it. Yeah. It does take a while to kind of wrap your brain around this stuff, but it starts to sink in. I, re I remember way back. And then here's another thing that kind of messes you up. We've all heard the, the term, credit, I'm going to credit your account. In our head, oh, you're going to credit my account. That's great. You're going to give me money? A credit to your account is a decrease, but it's used, that term is used. Oh, I'll credit your account. I'm gonna credit your account. Don't credit your, my account, debit my account. <laughs> if you can remember that, it's the opposite of that. You know, good to go. Yeah, and then the like, and like everything you do can kind of just revolve around, okay, if you know what happens to checking, with if it's a debit or if it's credit, everything else can kind of be backed into from that. Is even if cash doesn't even come into play, because if you if you if office supplies are bought, okay, is is that a debit or credit? Well, let's pretend cash was paid for. It. If we know that cash was paid for, it, then office supplies has to be a debit. Even if even if it was used with a credit card, so you can if you know this, you can just kind of back into what the other thing. Cash is going down, and I took the cash out of the company. This that means this is equity, and it has to be a debit. So a debit to equity. A debit to equity is taking money out. So it lowers the equity account. All right. Any questions? 
When's the next one? <laughs> what do you guys, what do you guys wanna what do you guys want to talk about next? <laughs> um. <laughs> this is good. What we got? I'm glad. Yeah, it was excellent. Cool, thank you. Well, think about it. If there's something that um, you want to see how it's working behind the scenes, just let me know. There's definitely a way complicated stuff, but this is this is going to be 99% of what we covered today is 99% of the time what you're going to see. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you. I'm going to sign yes. off. Uh, I was a little bit late, and uh, I was just wondering, is this kind of um, uh, webinar, so are we going to be uh, uh, in a regular basis? What's that? I'm sorry. Are we going to have these meetings in a regular basis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do. I do Zoom every week. And, okay. Yeah, and Pam, uh, Pamela does a Zoom every week. Um, mm -hmm. On Hers is always Saturday morning. So this Saturday morning, uh, she covers QuickBooks. Yes. And then Yannick does a Zoom every week, and he covers marketing stuff. And so I always put the links to those in the classroom so on the classroom tab you can you can see what's coming up okay thank you that was very good very helpful okay great thank you good to see you guys okay take thank care you. all thank you okay see you everybody bye see you. thanks steve yep thank you